Uh, hoi hoi folks, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name's Sean, aka Uncle Frogface, and welcome to today's video. If you're new here, then welcome. If you're not new, then welcome back. So today, I'm going to be doing some digital art. So I've not done anything digital for a while. Um, and way back when I first started the channel, one of the first videos I did was checking out the painting app Heavy Paint. So it's uh, it's an application that's available on uh, Windows, Mac, uh, iOS, Android. You can have it on your tablets, your iPads, on your computer. Uh, and it's more of a kind of plein air painting. So it's designed to be used for going out, for doing kind of quick sketches, all of that kind of stuff. And I really enjoyed it when I first used it. And I've used it a few times, but I haven't touched it for quite a while. Um, you know, I, I tend to use Procreate more than anything for kind of sketching and stuff. But I, I've kind of had a, a niggling want to go back to it and, and try it out again. So I thought, today's the day. Why not? I, I've got nothing else I'm doing today other than teaching later. So I've got my iPad. I'm going to use the iPad this time. I'm going to sit down and just do some studies with heavy paint. So I think first we'll check, uh, I think there have been a couple of updates, just check out the app again, see what's on there, and then do some studies. I have no idea what I'm going to paint yet, but I've got boards full of Pinterest references for landscapes and still lives and wildlife and all sorts of things. So I'm sure we'll be able to find something. But let's get stuck into this. So I'm just starting off just by playing around with some of the tools. So it's been quite a while since I've used this. Um, and I remember what most things do, but we have the draw tool, the rectangle tool, the fill tool, the chisel tool, the line tool. Um, there's a, a, a merge and a smudger as well. Um, and all the brushes have you know, different variations in their textures. Mostly this was just me kind of loosening up and drawing some lines and, and just trying to refresh myself my memory's not that great at the best of times and like i said it's been quite a while since i played with this but once i was happy with all of that i wanted to just go in and play with the smudge tool um so i've, I've not really played with this at all um and it, it's all right the opacity is um interesting to play with uh, it's not as smooth as i expected it to be but here is the user interface so we can change it to light mode dark mode we've got hardcore mode which takes off the ability to go backwards and forwards so to undo and redo uh, you can show your previously selected color there are sounds there's a timer as well um, and you can select how to select the color that you're using I prefer to have the color box, so that's what I've gone with. So for today's picture, I've decided to go with wildlife. Um, this is because I was looking through my boards on Pinterest and I highly recommend anyone who kind of wants to generate ideas, just create loads of random boards on Pinterest. I love, love my Pinterest boards. Um, but recently, Andrew and I watched one of the Oscar nominated documentaries, which was about um, a guy and an octopus, which if you get a chance to see it, watch it. I, I was hooked all the way through, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, but as I was looking through my wildlife board, I had this picture of an octopus and I thought, yeah, that, that seems like a nice thing to do. This picture, um, I, I'm going to be honest, it was a little bit of a struggle. I think I... I'm so used to the kind of way that I work in, in sketching things out lightly and building on top of that. It's quite hard to go in in what is effectively quite an impasto technique. You're laying down big swathes of colour um, and you're just kind of building up texture that way. And an octopus is not an easy thing to paint, not because of its shape really it's because of its texture and colour. So uh, Octopode can change their colours, they can change the texture of their skin, they're incredibly intelligent. Um, it makes you wonder why people think they're from, from another planet. Um, but yeah, I mean, just they're fascinating creatures. Two thirds of their brain are not even in their heads, they're actually in their limbs. So they can explore their surroundings whilst they're cracking open food to eat. Um, they're just 
honestly, the, the most fascinating creatures. Absolutely love them. Whenever I go to an aquarium, I always look out for an octopus. Um, so I've sculpted octopus before. I've, I've drawn octopus before. I've never really painted one before. And this particular example was a, a very blue octopus, but it had some yellows in it as well. So once I kind of struggled at the very beginning, you know, I decided on this very hard edged look. So I'm going in and this is just a, a square, I think it's a square brush or it might be a round uh, tipped brush. But I'm just going in with block colours and just trying to layer and layer and layer to get some texture. I come in later with uh, and try some of the opacity tools. I think it adds a little bit of depth. But the problem with opacity in this particular tool is when you're moving around, you kind of get this, this spray effect and some harsh lines. And that's not really what I want from something that's nice and opaque and to be blended in. So again, I'm just coming in and blending out shapes. So another thing to note about heavy paint is the uh, toolbar at the top where your color picker and your tools are, that can actually be detached and moved around, which sounds great. I usually work in landscape orientation. It's just kind of my preferred way to, to sketch and draw uh, and paint. The problem with this is when you turn it to a landscape orientation, Obviously, all of the tools auto rotate, so your toolbar is at the top. You can detach that toolbar, but when you move it over to the side, it would be really nice if it kind of docked to the side and maybe changed the way that that looks so that you had more real estate to be able to draw on. Otherwise, you're left with either a very thin strip at the bottom in landscape or like this, more of a, a square aspect. So that's why I chose this aspect today and I'm going for this more square picture. So I'm using the, the merging tool here and just going in, trying to blend out some of the colors. Um, you can see this is one of the parts where I was struggling and I wasn't really liking how the texture was going. So just push it back and paint over the top. I, I think of it like having a palette knife and kind of scraping the paint away and then just going over the top of it is absolutely fine. Just add some extra texture underneath. So. Because we've got no layers here, either it's all about painting on one layer. So going in, you can chisel out your shapes and for the background, all that kind of stuff. You can zoom in, so it's a simple pinch uh, to zoom. So I zoomed right into the eye here, reduced the size of my paintbrush and just adding some detail into the eye, just to add a bit of uh, dimensionality and some realism to the eye. An octopus's eye is so weird with the, the square pupil um, sometimes they're, they're different shapes as well but they can open them right up and close them right down um, three hearts and an octopus uh, sorry I should stop with the octopus facts they're, they're just fascinating creatures so I felt that this was looking a bit flat and I wanted to add a bit of depth so I wanted to add in this tentacle which was kind of draping over the front of the octopus so this was quite simple I just came in and I'm really staying really loose and rough with this. I think a loose rough approach to anything in heavy paint um, really pays dividends. You could spend a lot more time and really get to know the tools and paint something a lot more refined, but with such a long break since the last time I used it, this, this loose approach I think worked really well for this. So we've got these suckers in because the way the, the tentacle is oriented, we're seeing the underside of the tentacle. So all of these lovely suckers, which obviously get smaller as they get to the tip of the tentacle. So we've got the, the rings of the, tent, the uh, suckers, the insides, add a bit more of the flesh around the outside. And because they're quite see-through, because our octopus don't have any bones at all, um, you can see through them when light passes through. So this is a really good way to add a little bit more depth and a little bit of texture to the picture. So I'm adding in first a little bit of yellowish shadow and I'll come in later and really make that pop. So I've gone back to the body part to try and push that back. Again, wasn't liking what happened, tried blowing it out, wasn't happy with that either. Had a couple of glitches here trying to uh, use the undo tool but I decided just to, to, again, blur it out a little bit and see if I can do something a little bit better. So here's that light coming through the tentacles. I think if you're struggling with something bouncing between different areas, having time to kind of 
sit back, have a look at what you're doing, assess it and try different things really helps. So I think this adds just a little bit of extra dimension to those tentacles. Um, and again, we'll work on those a little bit more in the future. So I found that one of the brushes uh, had a really nice soft edge. I thought this would be a nice way to bring in some light. So if you're struggling with depth, bring in some light because that will obviously balance it out a little bit. So rather than pushing things back with shadow, you can highlight things with the light and bring it forward. And now I'm using that same brush with a darker color just to add a, a bit of depth. Didn't like that. Tried using the opacity, which again was a bit hit and miss. But I think I end up with something that I like. So there we go, just adding a little bit of shadow into those areas there. And around the eye as well, just to give that a little bit of depth. I then found that one of the brush presets was this kind of random textured brush. And I think this is was the turning point for me. This is where I was like, okay, I, I can make this work. Um, it's it's going to be very stylized, but it will work as a picture. So I, I'm using this and I'm picking colors that I've already used. So I'm picking out the highlights, I'm picking out the shadows, I'm picking out the mid-tones. And I'm building up texture with this brush and I think it gives a nice mottled effect to the skin of the octopus. And again, it's a very stylized look. Most things that I've seen in heavy paint are very stylized and it's a really nice uh, kind of aesthetic for pictures. Not necessarily what I do, um, but you know, it's fun to experiment, it's fun to do different things. And this was a lot of fun to do. So we're coming near the end and really I'm just fiddling about and adding in extra little details, um, which I think just, just make it pop just a little bit more. So I think this is the very last thing that I'm adding just here. It's amazing how easy it is to get caught up in a painting. I think that took me about 45 minutes and it didn't feel like that at all. I was just having fun. Uh, experimenting with the program. I think the program does have uh, some limitations. I, I found myself wanting to sketch. I think that's something that for me is kind of a, a basis for all of my artwork is I like to do just a, a line drawing or a sketch or just rough out some shapes and this doesn't really give you the opportunity to do that. This is more about painting big blocks of colour and, and shade and, and tone and kind of blocking out a whole picture. And for me, um, whilst it's definitely a way of working, I think Procreate personally for me is my uh, application of choice, but I can see some uses for this. For instance, I know that I could take that painting that I've done and take it into Procreate and further refine it. Although, if you'd like to see me do that same painting in Procreate, just to kind of see the difference between the two programs, leave a comment down below because that's was definitely something I'd be interested in doing. Um, as always, every program has its own pros, its own cons. I would advise anyone that's interested to definitely go out, pick this application up for whatever device you have, and just give it a try. It's really nice for just playing around. I'm definitely gonna experiment some more. I think I just need to learn the program a little bit better to be able to utilize it. Um, but yeah, I've hoped you've enjoyed today's video and until next time, goodbye.